For this Halloween episode of Prop Shop, I'm going to build a complete cosplay of the main character of Five Nights at Freddy's. We'll be taking our version out for some tricks or treats. The treats will be meeting fans and other cosplayers at New York Comic Con, and the tricks will be finding some fun ways to terrify Regal fans of this seven foot tall animatronic monstrosity. Grab some popcorn and let's dive into the build. The original Five Nights at Freddy's video game went viral after its launch in 2014, thanks in large part to the Let's Play videos by streamers and influencers. In the original game, players acted as a security guard for a closed pizza parlor that's haunted by possessed animatronic characters, headlined by the band leader, Freddy Fazbear. The initial success of Five Nights at Freddy's has spawned 12 more games, a series of novels, and a popular toy line. And this Halloween, Freddy makes his big screen debut at Regal Cinemas. Since this is the biggest prop shop to date, we'll need to jump right in to knock this out in time to scare Regal fans coming to see the movie. So let's take a look at how we built this icon of terror. I'm extremely excited to be building our prop shop's first full cosplay. I've built dozens of costumes for my kids over the years, but now I get to leverage those skills and tools to build this special Halloween cosplay to delight and scare our movie fans. We'll be using two main creative processes for the build. My good friend and fellow maker, Chris Dotson, will be working on Freddy's animatronics, leveraging a lot of 3D printing and electronics. While I'll be fabricating all of Freddy's body out of EVA foam, Chris and I will connect throughout the build process to ensure a seamless combination of these two elements. Let's take a closer look at how we both tackled this challenging build. For the body parts of this costume, I leveraged a crafting program called Pepacura. This software allows creators to take 3D models and create printable paper mockups at scale. For me, this is massively helpful since I'll get the scale locked in, then use those paper models to construct templates for our EVA foam parts the same size. All of my cosplays are built to fit a specific person that'll be wearing the costume. In this case, Chris has agreed to don this bulky costume for our campaign of horror that we'll be unleashing on Regal moviegoers. Yeah, dude. On our to-do list will be the following cosplay parts. The feet and hands, the upper and lower leg units, the upper and lower arm units, the torso and chest pieces, and Freddy's head. For each of these pieces, we start with a paper peppercore model and decide how we're going to slice them up into foam templates. We then use those templates to trace out the parts on half inch thick EVA foam. I'm using common floor mat materials for most of the parts. I'll cut out the foam parts with my bandsaw. This gives me a very smooth surface to glue together. Before gluing things together, I heat shape the EVA parts. I use a heat gun to make the foam more flexible, then bend the pieces into the desired shape. This pre-shaping makes the gluing process much easier. I use mostly contact cement to join the pieces for this cosplay together, as it provides a connection that's solid, but also remains flexible. I also reinforce some of the seams that might be under more stress than others with some hot glue. Once the pieces are assembled, we need to wrap them in fur. Unlike all my other prop shop builds where the parts are primed and painted, these parts will be covered in fleece. This process is time consuming as each section is curved and we want to maintain a smooth surface with very few seam lines. I start by cutting out the pieces of fur roughly the size that we'll need for each part. Then I use Super 77 spray adhesive on the foam part and apply the fur, working to keep it as smooth as possible. In some cases, the curves are too complicated to wrap the piece with fur without needing a seam. In that case, I'll deliberately pick a place to cut and seam. And in most cases, I try to make those the places that we can see seams in the movie version of the costume. In other cases, I'll try to keep them in the back of the piece or in places that are less visible. To ensure the fur stays in place and doesn't fray, I use hot glue to tack down the edges and seams. Most of these parts are wider or larger than the actor's body. So to keep the pieces in place, I'm adding padding. 
These are made of a light cushion foam wrapped in black spandex material. I use spray adhesive and contact cement to wrap the foam in this material and then use more contact cement and hot glue to attach each of these cushions into the parts. After the fur is attached and the padding is added, it's time to make the pieces look like they've been used and are dirty and old. To achieve this look, I'm using clay powdered, often called Fuller's Earth, in a couple of different colors. It can be applied by a brush or by pounce bag. Pounce bags are muslin bags filled with colored powder that can be tapped on the fabric, fur, or even skin to give the prop or the actor the look of being dirty. So here is the left foot that hasn't been distressed. You can see the nice white crisp edge there, um, solid color all the way across the foot. And then here is the one that's been distressed. You can see that the seam between the two is dirtied up. You can see that in between the toes has been darkened. There's some dirty stains on it just enough to give it a lived in look. As the pieces are completed, we have to design ways for these parts to be worn. In some cases, the tension of the padding we install will work, but others like the lower torso and upper legs will need more support. Starting with the lower torso, I used an old shoulder rig I had on hand and hand sewed some nylon straps with metal rings in them. I then glued those to the lower torso. This allows the actor to wear the piece like suspenders. And with that support piece in place, I created additional nylon straps with quick release clips from the torso piece to the upper leg. This should help keep them from falling down over the knees when walking. We also need to come up with a way to make it look like these fur parts were being held together by a mechanical skeleton. To solve this, I ordered a printed spandex suit that can be worn under the pieces so audiences only see the mechanical parts in between any gaps in Freddy's fur pieces. In order to ensure the costume will fit and the actor will be able to move and walk in it safely, Chris and I met up several times to do test fittings with the parts. We started when they were just paper models, and then we moved to the EVA parts, and finally with the fully furred and rigged pieces. At each stage, we noted things that needed to be modified so it would fit and work better. While most of the parts followed the standard build process, there were a couple that had special considerations. The first of these that I tackled was the feet. While we still used paper models and EVA foam construction, I had to consider how the actor would walk in these. We started work on Freddy's feet. I've got my paper model that I'm cutting up and making into foam templates to build it. But I'm starting with the base of the foot. And I'm using here a trick that I've used in a lot of cosplays. And that is I'm suspending, I'm floating at the bottom of this cosplay foot on one of Chris's slide on shoes that's old and beat up and he doesn't mind me destroying. And you can see that a lot of what's going to happen is Chris will be standing on his shoe. So all the wear and tear of walking around the convention floor will be happening on his tennis shoe and not on the EVA foam, which is not technically touching the ground when he's standing still. It'll still get dinged up as he's walking around the convention floor, but a lot less so because it's floating like this. So first step is to glue the shoes into the base of the foot, and then we'll be building the rest of the foam foot and furring it, and then those will be ready to add to the costume. To fur them, we have to do two different colors. There is a light color on the bottom, up to the edge here, and then the top is the main body color of fur. And I've decided to tackle that with the light color first, to bring that across the bottom and up to this edge, glue that down and then do the top fur to meet that. So I've taken the first step of that, is to mask out everything I don't want to overspray when I do the spray adhesive. 
So we'll hit that with spray adhesive, and then we will add our fur, cut it out, and trim all of the edges and glue it down before we tackle the darker fur. Once the feet were complete, we were able to test fit the entire lower half of the costume. I'm really happy at how it looks and how well Chris can move in this. For the hands, I had to make them big enough for Chris to operate two different pieces of equipment inside them. First is the remote control for the animatronics in the head. And the other is a walkie-talkie that allows Chris to push a button and talk to me without me having to put my face near Freddy's giant maw to hear my friend. Obviously, the most iconic and complex part of this build is Freddy's animatronic head. We initially were going to 3D print this, but at the scale and size we needed, the weight became an issue. So we moved to EVA foam construction for this part as well. Like all the pieces, I started with paper Peppacura models, then created templates that I used to build EVA foam parts. I glued them all together into two sections, the main head part and the jaw. But before I added the fur, we had to figure out how Chris was going to be able to wear this. I quickly landed on a hard hat solution. This hard plastic base is lightweight but sturdy. It also has a mechanism built in with a tightening strap that keeps it light but on the wearer's head. And since we weren't worried about dangerous materials falling on Chris inside the suit, I cut the top of the helmet off to lower the weight and also to allow more airflow inside the costume for Chris. I then installed lightweight aluminum bars on either side of the helmet with fitted plastic lined slots for them to go into inside Freddy's head. This allows us to take the entire thing in and out, which will help when we're installing and servicing the animatronic eyes. Those will be mounted on two more aluminum bars that I installed directly behind the eye sockets of the costume. Finally, I had to determine the best way to attach or hinge the jaw. I ended up just extending one of the connection points we already had in the helmet that secures through the aluminum bar and just extended it to go to the outside of the head. I added some hard nylon spacers to this connection point so the foam won't rip apart over time. With the final rigging complete, I turned to furring the head. There's both dark and light brown fur on the head parts and a lot of complex curves to account for. This was definitely the hardest part to wrap in fur, but I was finally able to get it done with just a single seam straight down the back of the head. After furring the head, I did some distressing and reconnected all the parts. While the main part of the head was done, I also had to fabricate the ears, the nose, the teeth, and the hat. The ears were most like the other parts, which I fabricated in EVA foam and then wrapped in fur. I also had some leather looking fabric scraps that worked great for the inner ear. Those ears are connected to the head by two metal rods, so I also fabricated those in EVA foam and painted them to look like brushed steel. For Freddy's teeth, his nose, his eyebrows, and hat, I built all of them out of EVA foam. I then primed them each in Plasti Dip and either coated them with a base coat of final paint or hand painted them to give them a colored or distressed look. Finally, I attached each to the head. The nose, the teeth, and the whisker dots were all glued on. The hat had to be attached with a strap that runs through the top of the head and is glued down from the inside. For the eyebrows, we wanted the ability to move them, so I mounted those on rods, allowing them to rotate. This allows us to create Surprise Freddy, Angry Freddy, Quizzical Freddy. My last task was to sew an enormous bow tie for Freddy. I did some online searching and then roughed up a pattern that would make a bow tie approximately 12 inches wide. I started by taking some extra black fabric I had on hand and cutting out two large rectangles. These will be the front and the back side of the bow. 
I then cut out pieces for the center band that holds the bow together. I sewed both of those pieces, finished sides in, and then reversed them so that the edges were all finished. I then hand sewed the band around the bow tie to finish it up. Of all the parts of this epically big project, I'm most excited for the animatronics. Chris has constructed a set of Freddy eyes that can blink, move, and light up in different modes, all controlled remotely from hand units he's using inside the suit. Chris, when I came to you with this crazy idea to yep. build an entire Freddy Fazbear costume, right. you kind of gravitated toward the mechanical eyes as yeah. something that intrigued. Mm -hmm. what, what intrigued you about that? Well, I've always liked animatronics. Mm -hmm. So practical effects and film and animatronics, that's always fascinated me. And I have a little bit of experience <laughs> with, you know, Arduino and a few servos on different Halloween props and things of that nature. Right. But I've always wanted to build like a full on animatronic. And so this was my chance. And right. I was like, right. And I wanted Freddie to, to really pop and like be alive. Right. Right. And, I think the skill that you have with building these costumes, this just this is just that last little percent, right. which would separate us from all the other cosplayers. Correct. Yeah. At Comic Con. Yeah. No. And so you've done a fantastic job. Thank these you. look terrific. So what will Freddie be able to do? What what will his eyes be able to do in the costume? So there's two versions of the Freddie OS. <laughs> I like that. There's the the. Full Freddy, and then there's the Freddy Light. Okay. What does Freddy Light do? So Freddy Light is he will have his eyes will light up and they will be red. Okay. Right. And he will blink, and the blinking will be randomly. So. Oh, so there's nothing that you'll have to do. Nothing to control it. Nothing okay. to trigger it. It's just random. So that's the 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 light version of the Freddy OS. The full Freddy OS will actually use this controller. Okay, so you'll have that inside the suit. I'll have this, I'll hold this in the arm of the suit. Okay. And this will connect up the back to this other cable. Right. And with the joystick, I'll be able to move his eyes left and right, up and down. I'll have a button to make him blink. And then if I want to go from red eyes to ghost eyes, I can hit another button. Nice. And they'll go from red to white. Okay, that sounds tremendous. But I have to say, the look of these is spectacular. The finish work that you did. So the eyelids, this is mostly 3D printed? Mostly 3D okay. printed with a few mechanical parts. The eyelids are 3D printed. And what I did with those, they're actually 3D printed in resin. Okay. It was the fastest thing I did. It was printed, right? sprayed with a rattle can of like hammered steel, right. I think. And then a couple washes of different shades of brown to kind of make him. And they look rusted. rusted. They look amazing. And then how did you do the, the main part of the eyes? So the eyes, I've got one here. Uh, the eyes are actually 3D printed in PET G okay. filament. And the irises and the cornea, the iris is printed on acetate, okay. color acetate, like the overhead transparency. Right. And then the cornea is 3D printed in a in a hyper clear resin, and so wow. glued so the, to the light back. will reflect through all of the this. light will go through. It gets diffused in here, and then inside, you can see here we put a little LED on the bottom to aim and kind of bounce around that light. Right. And uh, so you're not going to have any hot spots right, in the right. eye, and that gets hidden by that lower lid. So. I have installed two rails on the inside, right behind yep. the eyes yep. of Freddy's head. Mm -hmm. How are we going to mount this in that space? Do you have any ideas on that? I, I did. I looked at the inside of the head and as I'm trying to s get the eyes spaced properly, and I think we had a happy accident. When okay. You put those rails in. <laughs> I'll take that. So the Arduino and the breakout right. board fit perfectly. I mean, there's not a... <laughs> As though we measured, as but all, we did not. But we did okay. not. There's <laughs> okay. not even a millimeter of wiggle room. So wow. it's a very nice snug fit. Okay. And I think that's even going to simplify securing. So okay. I had originally thought, and I did put holes in this base, and I thought we would have to tap. Tap the aluminum. Into okay. the aluminum. But I think we'll just be able to zip tie this in place, and it's not going to I love the most high-tech piece of the suit being held right. in place by zip ties <laughs> like that. Cosmic There's something balance. beautiful it's, it's a balance. about that. Yeah. All right. Well, excellent. Well, I can't wait. The next step is to get these installed yes. in the head and then do a full suit up. 
Once all the parts are constructed and rigged, it's time to do a final test fit. Chris starts with the spandex printed undersuit and balaclava. He then steps into the lower torso, which is attached to the upper leg pieces. We slide on the lower legs and the feet, which completes the lower half of the costume. The upper half starts with the chest piece and the upper arms. While Chris still has the use of his hands, we move to the head. Chris holds that while I tighten the helmet into place and plug in the electronics to a portable battery. After the head's on, the last thing we add are the lower arms that have the hands attached. This completes the suit up and we can finally see the whole thing as it looks as a complete cosplay. The distressed fur looks great and the undersuit really helps convince the audience that this is a fully animatronic creature. I can't wait to share this creation with fellow fans at New York Comic Con. But we still have one minor logistical problem to solve. Getting this seven and a half foot tall costume to New York City. Since we worked on the costume right up to the last minute, we won't have time to ship it to New York. And we'd have to buy two extra plane tickets or pay massive baggage prices to bring it by airplane. In the end, we decided to drive to New York City. And if we're going to spend 11 hours driving to the convention, we figured we might as well make some stops along the way to surprise some Regal Theaters. <laughs> we had a wonderful time engaging with some of our Regal Theater guests and staff during our road trip, but that was quickly upstaged by our arrival at New York Comic Con. I've attended a lot of pop culture conventions over the years and brought many cosplays with me, but nothing had prepared me for the overwhelming reception we got in New York. From the moment we hit the convention floor with Freddy, we were mobbed by fans. Thousands of people took pictures and videos with Freddy and talked excitedly about the upcoming movie. Some of our favorite cosplayers from around the country were on hand and many took pictures with Freddy and talked to us about the construction process of the costume. The cosplay community is a wonderfully supportive group and both Chris and I were thrilled to be there with so many of our friends and fellow fans at this amazing convention. The highlight of the convention for me was meeting the director of Five Nights at Freddy's. Of course, we dove directly into a discussion about the importance of practical effects and costuming in filmmaking. Hello, Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, so soft. Here. I feel like I'm really underrepresenting right now. <laughs> we're doing, we're doing it all. We're doing it all. Yeah. That's all good. Okay. I'm with Regal, and we do some replica prop builds to promote movies. When Five Nights at Freddy came up, we could not help but to try our okay. hand. But we know that you use practical effects heavily in this movie. We so did. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of that? We knew from the get-go we wanted to tackle this practically and not with VFX. We really wanted the cast to be able to interact in real time with these incredibly large, amazing animatronics. And there was no better team to bring them to life than Jim Henson's Creature Shop. And um, they're currently on display, actually, at Universal Hall uh, Horror Nights at the moment. So, yeah. I, I may check what we did against theirs. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, you know, they're incredible craftsmen and women and so talented. And we were using the designs from the game to make sure that we were really landing this authentically to these beloved characters um, and bringing them to life in the right way. But there were also so many details to figure out in terms of bringing them to life practically, so there was no better collaboration um, than than Henson's Creature Shop. And no better time than Halloween to bring this movie out. Yes, I know. We're so excited that we're releasing Halloween weekend. It's awesome. Well, thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you so much. This is amazing. I love your shirt. <laughs> thank you very much. I love your fit. You guys are doing FNAF uh, justice. Thank you for supporting. It was a treat to meet with fans and talk with Emma about making Five Nights at Freddy's. And with our treats out of the way, it was time for some tricks. A short Uber ride from the convention later, we ended up at Regal's Union Square Theater. Chris immediately found a great place for Freddy to engage with fans, 
and waited for unsuspecting guests to come see movies at Regal. Everyone had a blast interacting with Freddy at both the theater and New York Comic Con. This build has been one of my favorite cosplay builds, and I hope you enjoyed seeing some behind the scenes look at how we created this video game icon. Now it's your turn to see Freddy Fazbear. Five Nights at Freddy's hits Regal Cinemas October 27th. Come see Freddy's whole animatronic clan in action on the big screen this Halloween. And who knows, our Freddy cosplay may make surprise appearances at some theaters during opening weekend. Maybe we'll see you at the movies this Halloween. We love you, John. John, how do you feel about uh, being John Douglas? I don't know. I've never been anybody but John Douglas. That's a good point. You should be really proud of this build because it's incredible. It has been a blast. How long did it actually take you from start to finish? Three years. Three years? 